Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. A couple of weeks ago, or maybe it was even a month ago, I put out a post on YouTube asking you all what are the questions you would like to ask Alcat because they let some content creators know that they were gonna do an AMA and we were welcome to ask whatever questions we like. You all gave me a ton of different options and I took all of them and presented them to the developer. Well, that AMA has finally come out and a lot of interesting information has come out. So I'd like to share it with many of you. I wanna say right up front, one of their answers is an absolute gut check that is going to be very, very disappointing for a lot of you. And so because of that, we're gonna do this video a little bit differently the way I usually would. We're gonna start with what I would consider the bad stuff. And again, it's only one thing that I feel like is gonna be really, really bad. Uh, then we're gonna get into the stuff that's great and I think it will be really interesting for you all. And then we're gonna end with the stuff that's neutral. It's kind of just questions that they've answered that you all probably won't feel one way or another about but might still be interesting for you to hear. With all that being said, I do a ton of content for Alcat Games, so if that interests you, please be sure to subscribe, hit the like button down below, it really helps and support me, and keep in mind that I do live stream on both YouTube and Twitch. All right, let's kick things off with the gut punch. Hope all of you are sitting down. Currently, Alcat is developing four different games. None of them are Pathfinder, or Starfinder related. Oof, oof, I gotta be honest with you, didn't see this coming. Even in the video I released yesterday, comparing Baldur's Gate 3 and Owlcat, I think I mentioned something about the next Owlcat Pathfinder game. I had already heard some rumors that they were developing multiple games right now, and just automatically assumed that one of them would be Pathfinder, but apparently, that is actually not the case, and they have no future plans for that IP as of this time. Very, very disappointing. I hope that changes soon, or at least I hope there's another reputable developer who's going to start making some Pathfinder games in the very near future. We've had some rumors about a couple of Pathfinder games that will come out, but... Frankly, I haven't heard very much new information and it's not clear when the next Pathfinder game will be available. And yeah, this is just very disappointing. I'm sorry to have to be the one to report this news. Obviously, I'm still looking forward to whatever Alcat does next, but similar to Larian with Baldur's Gate, it would have been nice to see them continue with the IP, but I guess that's just not going to happen. All right, there's a couple of other things I want to note in this section. Nothing that's nearly as bad as what we just discussed, but some things that might still disappoint you all. As I mentioned before, they are currently working on four games. None of them are based in World of Darkness, Star Wars, Rifts, or D&D. Although Alcat does mention that they love all of those IPs and would certainly be open to working on games within them. So obviously this is disappointing for those of you who are really, really hoping a Vampire Masquerade game will be coming from Alcat. Maybe that'll happen later on down the line, but it's not currently in the cards. Alcat is also currently not working on an Icewind Dale 3 game, and they don't believe there will be an opportunity to do so in the future. I know many of you felt like Alcat's style of gaming would be perfect for an Icewind Dale sequel, and so you'll probably find that information disappointing. Never say never, so it might still end up happening, but for right now, that's not in the cards. Here's one that'll hit harder for all the Rogue Trader fans. There are currently no plans for a full respec option in Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader, since not including one was a deliberate design decision. So for those of you who are not aware in Rogue Trader, you can only respec a party member back to the level that they were at when you first recruited them, which causes some issues because some of those party members have absolutely atrocious initial builds that can be hard for players to work around. So it would have been nice to be able to respec them all the way back to level one so you have a lot more control over what is in their builds but unfortunately that's not going to be available although i do believe it might be available through modding i haven't played around with toy box much in rogue trader but if it's not available yet i'm sure it will be at some point 
And then the final note I have in the quote unquote bad section is there are no plans to add a real time with pause option to Rogue Trader as it was built from the ground up with turn based in mind. Of course, this is no big surprise. Rogue Trader, similar to Baldur's Gate 3, it was built clearly with turn based in mind. Although a real time with pause option was added uh, through modding to Kingmaker, and then it was part of the standard kit with Wrath of the Righteous. And to be honest with you, I do miss that in Rogue Trader. It would be nice to switch back and forth uh, between the two modes, but it's just so obvious that Rogue Trader is a different beast from the Pathfinder games that Alcat has done. So it's not surprising at all that that option will not be available. All right, so now all of the bad stuff is out of the way and we can get to some of the good stuff. Man, there are some very, very interesting things happening at Alcat. Unfortunately, they don't provide specific information about what they're working on, but they do give us enough in order to be excited. But before we get into that, there is one interesting thing that came out of this AMA that brings up a lot of questions. And so I wanna go ahead and put it here in this section. As I mentioned, Alcat has four games in development and they're not ready to talk about them specifically. However, there's a question in the middle of the AMA where they're asked about creating their own IP. Alcat says they have multiple ideas for creating their own IP, but at this time, there are no specific plans. So that means they have four games currently in development. None of them are for a unique IP, and yet at the same time, none of them are Pathfinder, Starfinder, Icewind Dale, World of Darkness, Star Wars, Rifts, or D&D, which begs the question, what the hell are they working on? I'm kind of at a loss. <laughs> to be honest with you, this is very, very interesting. I can't even imagine what they were doing. To be honest with you, I had been under the assumption that at least two of the games they were working on would be Pathfinder related and a unique IP that Alcat has come up with. But apparently that's not the case. And all four of these games are IPs that are already established. So what the heck is going on? I would love to hear you all's thoughts down in the comments about what you think Alcat is cooking up. All right, moving forward into the really interesting stuff. At least one of the games that Alcat is working on will be an Unreal Engine 5. This game will still be party based. So it's not gonna be like a Witcher experience where you're by yourself and it will have a significantly larger budget and be a more cinematic experience than all of the other games you have played from Alcat. I've heard some rumors and rumblings about this, but it was always in articles that had to be translated from Russian, and I didn't feel confident about whether or not the information I was seeing was translated properly or what was actually being conveyed. So for me, this is the first time that I've heard this information where I feel like I can trust it, and it's amazing. I can't wait to find out what a fully cinematic experience from Alcat is really like. It seems like they're trying to make their own version of Baldur's Gate 3, especially when you hear this next part. Alcat has decided that full voiceovers are a must have feature for all of their future titles. This does add to the budget and complexity of development, but they believe they have solutions that will ensure their games can be fully voice acted while at the same time maintaining the level of quality in their writing and the scope of their writing that players have grown used to. Wow, 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 wow. It really seems like for at least one of these new games, Alcat is trying to swing it all the way out the park and really, really stretch beyond what we're used to seeing from them. I think that's so exciting. I can't wait to see what they're coming up with. And again, it at least seems like this game is going to be for an IP that is already fully established. So it should be very, very interesting to find out what they are actually working on. Now, for those of you who prefer more 
isometric experiences like Wrath of the Righteous and Kingmaker, you might be disappointed by this news and feel like you're not going to be playing Outcat games in the future. Pump your brakes. They're actually still going to be making those types of games. Outcat confirms in the AMA that they still plan to work with Unity and they are still going to make isometric old school type of RPGs. So they're going to have these fully cinematic experiences and these isometric RPGs and all of them are going to be fully voice acted. Bananas. <laughs> That's absolutely amazing. I think in the years to come, it's going to be really a lot of fun to be a fan of Outcat games. Can't wait to see what they come up with. And then the last note in the section of stuff that I feel like was really, really cool that came out of the AMA, they mentioned that the response to the Dance of Mass DLC was overwhelmingly positive that Alcat really, really likes how the community responded to it and that they believe future DLCs and games will be geared around um, being just like that. Now, for me, I feel like this is very positive because I love it when DLCs revolve around party members, giving more content to your party members, letting you interact with your party members more and things of that nature. And that's really the core of Dance of Mass. So I think this is absolutely a fantastic lesson for Alcat to walk away with. And I would love to see more of their DLCs made in the same vein as Dance of Mass. Let me be clear, Dance of Mass had its weaknesses. I did a review on the DLC. I talked about what I felt were some of the issues with it. So I'm not trying to gloss it over and make it all sound like rainbows and cherries, but I feel like it was significantly better than most of the DLC that was specifically for Wrath of Righteous and better than um, Through the Ashes, which I did not particularly enjoy. So really, really happy to see the Alcat has learned like, hey, focusing on the party members is really where it's at. That's an easy way to please our audience and make them feel like this DLC was worth their time. And I'm looking forward to them making more DLCs like that in the future. All right, so now we've gotten through everything that I felt like was especially good or especially bad from the AMA. And now it's the middle ground stuff that's kind of just general information for questions that the community had. Circling back to Rogue Trader, Alcat mentioned that cooperation with Games Workshop was fruitful and both sides are happy with Rogue Trader, although no new games in the 40K universe are planned as of yet, or at least they didn't specifically mention any games. So it could be possible that one of the four games Alcat is working on is in fact in that world, but there's no direct confirmation. They do plan to release multiple large patches for Rogue Trader instead of an enhanced edition the way they did with Wrath of the Righteous. The question mentioned that they had a couple of massive patches that significantly changed the mechanics in Rogue Trader and it seems like Alcat kind of likes that. They feel like it gives them the opportunity to make the experience fresh for players multiple times throughout a game's lifetime. And so they're gonna focus on that instead of trying to make a whole bunch of changes at one time in an enhanced edition. Alcat also confirmed that there will be no additional paid Wrath of the Righteous DLCs. Of course, we already knew this, so I put this in the neutral section. There was a question about potentially having a DLC that directly links Kingmaker and Wrath of the Righteous together, but Alcat said that they released a survey asking what are some of the DLCs the community would like to see, and a DLC of that type only had very middle level scores. Something like Dance of Mass rated much higher. And again, they're very, very happy with the feedback Dance of Mass receives. So it seems like they believe that they made the right decision and they're ready to move on to new projects. There are also no plans to add a Portuguese of Brazil translation to the game, but there are mods that allow you to get that content. Alcab was also asked a question regarding cut content and how hard is it to deal with letting some particular things go. And so they mentioned some of the things that they really, really wanted to do in games, but unfortunately didn't get a chance to. 
Pathfinder was meant to have more mythic path content, the crusade system should have been deeper. They wanted Rogue Trader to let you get bigger ships and more psychic disciplines, along with more unique character abilities. Some of the content that was supposed to be in Rogue Trader for Act 4 ended up being cut. There's a hope, at least for Rogue Trader, that some of the things that they want to do can be added via DLC. Uh, not only the things that I've already mentioned, but there was also a question about the telekinesis discipline. There hasn't been a decision yet about whether or not that should be added, but obviously Alcat is aware that there are multiple people in the community who want it. There are currently no plans for an offline physical PS5 copy of Rogue Trader to be available. There was also a question about why are Rogue Trader companions so much different from Wrath of the Righteous companions? And Alcat kind of just shrugged it off and said, look, it's a different universe and a different game. Why wouldn't the companions be different? I feel like the question is poorly stated, but I get where they're coming from. In my review, I made it clear I felt like Rogue Trader Companions are significantly weaker than Wrath of the Righteous and frankly even Kingmaker, so I get it, but I don't think the way to ask them is trying to compare two games, you know, we should just be more direct with the question. Hey, why did you make these Companions more standoffish why didn't you give them more content i don't feel like there's enough party member content in wrath of the righteous to be honest with you why didn't you give more of the party members arcs things of that nature to uh get them to open up a little bit more i am curious about the thinking of why they made wrath companions the way they are i think some of it is probably influenced from games workshop because of how they want the warhammer universe to be portrayed but it would be nice to get more specific information from them. Maybe that'll happen in another AMA. There was also a question about potentially remastering Kingmaker and Wrath of the Righteous into Pathfinder 2E mechanics. That would be very, very cool to see. Alcat made it clear that the idea is enticing, so they're absolutely not against it, but it's not currently in the cards. There was also a question about the Gunslinger class and if we could see it in one of those previous games or perhaps in another Pathfinder game that Alcat does in the future. They said that implementing Gunslinger into Wrath of the Righteous or Kingmaker would be way too difficult because you would basically have to create specific weapons and specific mechanics around one class and that would be a ton of work. But as far as whether or not it could be in a future Pathfinder game Alcat does, they said it would depend on whether or not it fit in thematically. So not directly a yes, but also certainly not a no either. There was also a question about whether or not Alcat would be willing to put in more features that allow players to automate buffing during their games. Obviously, that's not going to happen for Wrath of the Righteous. The vast majority of major updates have been done for it already. And Rogue Trader is set up in a completely different way. So pre-buffing isn't nearly as big of an issue as it was in the Wrath of the Righteous and Kingmaker games. Alcat made it clear that they are aware that on higher difficulties, all of the buffing gets very, very tedious, but they're hesitant about automating things too much to the point that players don't feel like they're actually playing the game. So sounds like they know there needs to be a little bit more balance and we'll see what they do in future titles. There was also a question about how do they change NPCs and adventure paths? And they gave kind of a general answer saying that this occurs naturally during the video game adaptation process because improving the player experience requires them to change the original path because playing a video game is of course much different than playing a tabletop. Alcat was also asked, do they have any plans to do future collaborations with Chris Avalon? For those who don't know, he's a very popular uh, video game designer and lead writer who's worked on titles such as Tyranny, Pillars of Eternity, uh, Fallout, Planscape Torment, and of course he worked with Alcat on both Kingmaker and Wrath of the Righteous. Alcat says that they enjoyed working with him very much, but currently there are no plans for future collaboration. And then finally Alcat was asked, do they plan to start placing their games on Xbox Game Pass? And they said, currently there are no plans to do so. And that's it. That's the full AMA. I thought it was very, very interesting hearing some of their answers. It was unfortunate to hear that there are no Pathfinder or Starfinder games in development, but it's really, really cool to hear that Alcat is working on something in Unreal, 
in Unreal Engine 5, that it's gonna be a fully cinematic experience, fully voiceover experience. I think that's gonna be absolutely amazing to see. And I can't wait to find out what are these four projects that they're currently working on. It's again, it's gotta be previously established IPs. So the, I guess the world is their oyster. <laughs> it could be just about anything. I can't wait to hear down in the comments you all's thoughts. While the future does look bright, I do wanna say one thing. How successful this new phase that Alcat is entering into, uh, how successful it's gonna be, I feel like will depend heavily on the stability of their products at launch. At this point, I think we can all agree, Alcat has developed a reputation where it's really two or three months after launch date before their products are fully stable to the point that you can play it from beginning to end with no game breaking bugs or issues. And I think in a smaller niche audience, that's kind of more acceptable, right? Like I love isometric RPGs and I love RPGs that have that old school feel that Wrath of the Righteous and Kingmaker gives, right? So I'm willing to forgive things that other people would not be willing to forgive because they don't like the genre like that. Well, now you're going into the fully cinematic realm, the fully voiceover realm, right? So theoretically, you're gonna pull in a whole lot of people who don't really care about CRPGs, right? They care about the experience they get. You're gonna be reaching out to a much wider audience and they're going to be a lot, a lot less forgiving of a game that they get halfway through and all of a sudden it's broken in a way that isn't fixed for a couple of weeks. So it's gonna be really, really important that these games don't just look better, that they're more cinematic, that they have nice voice acting. It's also gonna be critical that when those games release, people are able to uh, play them all the way through. Of course, there could be bugs, there could be issues, there could be problems. Baldur's Gate 3 had plenty of problems uh, upon release. The third act was an absolute mess, but most people could finish the game, all right? They may not have had the best of experiences, but they could finish it, all right? And so I'm really hoping that in this next wave of games that Alcat is doing, where they're setting it up to reach out to a much broader market, there's also going to be an increase in quality control. And when these games release, players are gonna get that solid sturdy product that they can play all the way through. And I think if they accomplish that, I have ultimate confidence in Outcatch writing, their mechanics, the classes that they come up with, all that kind of stuff. I feel like they're pretty close to the best in the business when it comes to all of that stuff. So if the quality control is there, man, the sky's the limit. Regardless, really looking forward to the future, what Outcast doing next, and you all already know, I'll be bringing that information to all of you. Once again, would love to see your feedback down in the comments. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you think Outcast is working on. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button. See you all in the next video. Take care.